Okay, wow. I haven't filmed a video in such a long time, so I guess I'm gonna be all awkward and out of practice, but I did get a haircut today before I filmed, so there's that. But I couldn't not make a video because I'm so excited. I've got the iPhone 14 Pro Max in here that I got today. What I'm most excited about are the camera features because I'm wondering whether this may be the best camera slash phone for expat creators like me. And you know, that includes the 48 megapixel camera, the larger sensors, the better front camera, and 4K cinematic mode. And you know guys, I'm coming from the 12 Pro Max and I know some of these features have already been introduced with the iPhone 13, but they're gonna be all new to me. So I'm really stoked to test them out. I'm not gonna talk about all the features of the new iPhone because there are other people who do a much better job at that than me, such as I Justine or Sarah Dici or MKBHD, so I'll recommend checking those videos out. I'm mainly gonna unbox this and give you my first impression and also test out some of the camera features that are relevant to me as a creator. So let's dive in. my old phone. Oh. Here are the two phones. So on the back, so this is the Space Gray, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and this is the new 14 Pro Max in the Space Black. So the colors are slightly different. What's definitely recognizable as well is the different sizes of the camera. So we've got the 12 Pro Max, and you see the camera bumps are a lot smaller than the 14 Pro Max. And then you've got the sides here, I'm not sure if you can see. This is more of a silver edge, whereas this is um, pure black here on the sides. And then thankfully, I am in Australia, so I still get the SIM tray, because I know the American models don't ship with the SIM tray because they're moving to eSIM. I'm glad that I still have the SIM tray because I often change SIMs to a local SIM if I'm traveling for a longer time. I mean, maybe it's possible with an eSIM as well, but I don't know how that works. Okay, so I'm gonna set this up now and then I'm gonna test it out tomorrow during the day because it's dark outside already and it's been raining for a few hours. And then I'm gonna check back in to tell you what it's like. Three days later. All right, so I've set everything up and it's been a few days, so I had some time to test out the new cameras on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And I've also decided to film this talking head bit on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, so you already get an idea of what it could look like in these kind of controlled sit-down scenarios. Now with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I was keen to see whether this could work as your main camera if you're an expat and you wanna create videos and share your journey online without you know, having to get into all the camera stuff and becoming like a semi-professional videographer. When I got my 12 Pro Max, two years ago. I was so excited because I wanted to create more videos and vlogs on my iPhone. I really like the idea of a minimal setup that doesn't need a lot of time to prepare and also doesn't attract too much attention, especially when you're filming outside. And while I did create some vlogs on my iPhone 12 Pro Max, I never really liked the image quality that came out of the iPhone. It all looked a little bit too digital and the computational imaging features made shots look quite weird, especially during filming. Another downside for me was the poor quality of the front camera, which really didn't make me very excited for vlogging with the iPhone. But starting with the iPhone 13 Pro, Apple introduced a Pro recording format with ProRes, which is pretty much a standard master format for the film industry. 
and that kind of gives filmmakers a lot more flexibility to tweak their footage in post even though the files are also a lot larger so you probably want to make sure that you only use it where necessary. Another feature that is a game changer for filmmaking on the iPhone is cinematic mode which was also introduced on the iPhone 13 but I heard that the version of the 14 is even better and that in combination with an improved front camera is amazing for iPhone filmmaking. The front camera on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max can shoot 4K in cinematic mode which makes it so much stronger for vlogging. The iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max could only do 1080p in cinematic mode and obviously my 12er didn't have cinematic mode at all so I'm already in heaven now vlogging on the front camera. With cinematic mode you obviously get that nice blurry background that makes your footage look more cinematic, hence the name, but you want to make sure that you don't overdo it because if you turn it up too much it looks a little bit weird and especially around the edges and around your hair it can sort of struggle a little bit. I tend to do only a slightly blurred background between f 7.1 and f11 when I'm shooting outside vlogging. This specific shot now I think is on 5.6 but I might change that later because the good thing is that you can change the aperture value later in the settings of the clip. For example in this situation in this scenario right now I have a big key light that nicely lights my face and the whole environment is controlled with different lights so not much is changing and with that the cinematic mode should work quite well. So here's a comparison of the front camera of the iPhone 14 Pro Max versus the 12 Pro Max and as you can see here it's a lot sharper and there's a lot more details in the highlights. The 12 Pro Max very easily blows out the highlights on both video and photo which I always found very frustrating. The image stabilization on the 12 Pro Max is already pretty good but now it's got a second gen sensor shift image stabilization which is even better. And in video we now have also action mode which is just nuts. You can just full on sprint with your camera and you get like very smooth gimbal like shots. Here's me running behind a jogger and just holding the phone in my hand. I also did a test where I was vlogging myself running. This is shot on the ultra wide in action mode and look at how smooth the background is moving. It's like magic. Something else that is very exciting that I haven't really had the chance to test out properly yet is the low light capabilities because it's been miserable and it's raining all day and it's freezing. So I haven't really gone out. Both the main camera and the ultra wide have physically larger sensors now, which means that they let in more light, uh, which makes them perform better in low light scenarios. Still not comparable to mirrorless cameras, obviously with their larger sensors, but it's definitely making a difference uh, compared to previous models of the iPhone. I definitely want to test this out and we'll probably head into the city in the next few days when it's dark and then I'm probably going to share the results on my Instagram if you want to follow me over there. I was also really impressed with the sound quality of the built-in microphone because I was doing a test where I was vlogging and I was using my Rode Wireless Go because I thought that would give me the best sound quality but then I did a comparison to the built-in microphone and I think I actually like the audio quality more from that. And let's just test out the sound as well without a microphone because I had a wireless mic connected to my phone before but now this is the phone sound so this is the microphone in the phone. Now that really only works for vlogging though because if you have like a sit down scenario like this and the camera is a little bit further away then you want to make sure that you get the microphone as close as possible to your mouth to get the best audio quality. So for example now I'm using a shotgun mic here that's rigged up from above so it's very close to my mouth whereas the camera is about a meter away from me and the sound wouldn't be that great from the built-in microphone. But maybe let's just do a quick comparison because I've got it all set up. Okay so this is now this shot where we are recording audio on the built-in microphone on the iPhone 14 Pro Max and now we're recording again on the shotgun mic which is a lot closer to my mouth. 
There you go. I can definitely say that I really like what I see from the iPhone 14 Pro Max video wise. And I'm really excited to test it out more in different lighting situations. Now let's quickly talk about photography features as well because there were a few exciting upgrades as well. So with the larger sensor on the main camera, we now can shoot 48 megapixel photos. From what I understand is that if you're in the normal camera mode, you still get a 12 megapixel image, but Apple takes the 48 megapixel image and processes it into a 12 megapixel image, which is more detailed, but has a smaller file size. If you want the full 48 megapixel resolution, then you need to switch on Apple Pro Raw, but then each image is about 60 to 80 megabytes. So you want to make sure you only use that when you really need it. Now with the larger sensors in both the ultra wide and the main cameras, you also get better low light performance again and what they say is with the ultra wide it's up to three times better and up to two times better for the main and the telephoto cameras and then you've got the other features such as macro mode which you also had on the iPhone 13 and I can't really see myself using it that much but it's definitely a cool feature I've never been this close to a tree so is the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max the best camera for expert creators? It can be. It depends on what type of creator you are, but it's definitely packed with all the features you need to start a YouTube channel, to create vlogs and TikToks and reels that look amazing. And it's just an amazing tool if you're just getting started. So some of the pros are obviously the versatility you get with three different cameras and then cinematic mode and the improved front camera. The microphone is really good and with the image stabilization you get really steady footage. And that kind of gives you all the things you need to create all kinds of videos from like sit down videos like this as we've seen earlier and also vlogs and run and gun type of videos. Some of the cons are probably the low light performance, even though I haven't tried that out yet, but you know, it will be much better than previous versions, but it's just, you know, gonna be limited compared to bigger, more professional cameras. There's no manual mode in the Apple camera app, which can be frustrating if you wanna dial in your white balance or change the exposure settings individually. There are apps for that where you can do that, but then I think you, you lose the capability of, for example, using cinematic mode. So if you're a creator that is interested in cameras and other filmmaking gear, the iPhone will probably not be your first choice but a welcome companion. I'm definitely really excited to use it for vlogs and test it out more to see how it can fit into my workflow because I would love to shoot certain vlogs just on the iPhone and not bring my large camera set up. I will definitely make a video about my iPhone vlogging gear and vlogging accessories that is sort of a follow-up of a video that I made two years ago. So subscribe if you're interested in that. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end and oh let me know in the comments below whether you will be using the iPhone as your main camera. Alrighty, that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. It's good to be back. Take care.